When it comes to social media and event promotions, I think that's something that we really excel with, particularly with the Custom Superhero Run. And part of what we do is I maintain a list of emails of people that I know are kind of social media influencers, either on Facebook, on Twitter, wherever they're at, if they have a blog, et cetera, um, our sponsors, you know, anybody along the way who I think um, might be able to share messages and might be interested in it. And then I send out kind of I send out a tweet. I'll say, hey guys, this is something we're promoting this week. We're really working on fundraising, or we're really trying to get people registered, or we've got this great blog post about the superhero run, and we'd love you to share it. And it's got a Facebook post ready to go, and a tweet ready to go, and they can just copy and paste. And not everybody does it every time. It's always a mix. But we get a great response, and then because they already usually have big lists, other people are retweeting from there. Um, so I think that there's a lot of a good response from just knowing that it's the same as a media list. You need to have kind of a social media contact list. So now, although we still provide, for example, with our largest um, event, the Bandana Ball, it raises about 20% of our operating budget, we still do a paper invitation, but we found that that's really more because people want to have that piece of paper that they stick on the bulletin board, not so much because that's how they're going to buy their ticket. Um, or by their table. So much of that now is done online. And so we have, um, through our, what I think is, and I'm extremely biased, and I think Jan does an amazing job, I think we have one of the best websites in town. Because when you go on there and you look at our particular event, you're going to see, what do I want to do at this event? I want to buy a ticket, boom, you're going to be able to click right through to the method where you're going to be able to punch in all your information. You're actually going to be able to tell me, oh, and these are my four friends, and I want to sit with them. Uh, you want to buy a table. Well, you want to see what your sponsorship benefits are. Well, great. Click right here. You're going to be able to pull up our entire benefit sheet. And you're going to be able to see, well, what do I get as a sponsor? And you're going to have a PDF right there so you can compare and contrast. Maybe I'm going to go for that little bit bigger sponsorship because look at these things I get. But you're going to be able to click right through to the mechanism where you're going to be able to get that gift online and secure your sponsorship. So when we think about incorporating social media into our events here at Green Lights, it's really about extending the experience of the day beyond the day itself. So for example, with our Texas Nonprofit Summit, uh, we use Facebook and Twitter to promote the sessions that are going to be happening, uh, the speakers that we're going to have, and just try to build excitement uh, around the event even before it starts. Then during the event day itself, we use Twitter primarily to keep involved with the conversation that's going on. We create a hashtag for the event, and we make sure that everyone in the conference knows they can use that to not only participate in the conversation, but to kind of get a recap of maybe the sessions they couldn't attend, or to stay up to date with all of the happenings that are going on. And then after the event, we use social media to keep the conversations going. Uh, to get people excited about next year's event, to make sure that everyone who might have missed the event can really get a recap and, and stay involved in the conversation throughout.